We're going to get back out now to Eric in Prospect. Um, Eric, you know, our team overnight was reporting some really heavy damage in that area. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing. Yeah, and that stands uh, true this morning as we take a look around some of the houses in this area, some of the streets, some of the yards in this area. We can see it very clearly, especially with this house behind me, which uh, I'll dive into here in a second with uh, Jordan Yotis, public information officer for Middletown Anchorage Fire Department, one of the only, not one of the, but come on in, Jordan, the only master public information officer certified in the state of Kentucky. You were telling me that this house we were looking at it as though the the actual roof collapsed on itself, but you were telling me that the roof actually blew off and is across the street. Across the street, yes. So this roof from this house is lodged in this house directly across the street. Is this the level of damage that you've seen around this area? Kind of the worst that we've seen in a long time. You know, we don't typically get these types of storms here. Usually they hit the river and they break off and they go to the adjoining county. So uh, this was a shock to see to come up on the top of the hill and see this much damage uh, in such a quick time. All right, let me square you up a little bit more to the camera, but while we continue the conversation about um, about what's been going on around the area, um, what have your crews been doing overnight and what's the plan for once the sun comes up? So we worked until about one o'clock this morning, uh, searching homes, making sure that there was nobody in their home still, if they were helping them out if they needed to, but also making sure that the homes that were damaged are safe for people to be inside as they collect their belongings and, and prepare to start to rebuild. So today, once day breaks, uh, they'll continue to do that in kind of a phase, what we refer to um, as like phase two. Uh, so phase one was last night. They'll go into phase two today, uh, doing a secondary search of those homes, again, making sure anybody that's there, they're safe and making sure that the home is structurally sound. And as we're talking, we're showing video uh, from damage from around the area. Some of the emails that I've been getting and just from conversation that you and I have had, I know that you are working in tandem with Metro Louisville and, and some other agencies. What's that partnership been like moving forward? The, the partnership for that has been uh, the utmost necessary. I mean, immediately we had contact from the mayor's office, uh, from Mayor Greenberg and, uh, and Deputy Mayor James. They actually came to our EOC in Anchorage Middletown, and we formulated a plan to figure out how we were going to help uh, the community mitigate this issue. So uh, once we did that, we came out last night and actually met with some of the crews that had been boots on the ground uh, and meeting with folks out in the community to see exactly what, what their needs were. You know, you see a storm like this, you have a house that's affected, but then the house next door is completely not touched at all. So, that's the case here with the house right off to the left here. All right, Jordan, we know you haven't slept. We know most of your crews haven't slept, so we're gonna we're gonna release you uh, to all the work that you have to do. We'll send it back to you. One thing we can tell you though, nothing concretely has been released right now, but we do expect there to be some sort of a press conference at some point this morning where we'll hash out more information. Grace all Michael. right, Eric, thank you. We'll be looking forward to that information. Thank you to Jordan as well. We're going to check in now with Jim Stratman, who is in Jeffersonville. Jim, a another one of the areas that we know was really hard hit. Mayor Mike Moore saying there's a ton of damage. Thankfully, no uh, deaths reported, but there were some injuries. Yeah, we're hearing about 10 injuries uh, reported over here on the Indiana here in Jeffersonville associated with those storms last night. You can tell the damage or the some of the extent of the damage from just where I'm standing right now. What you see behind me is the trunk of a tree laying down across somebody's yard, and this is rooted with that tree when it fell. Now, for reference, I'm six foot three. This is significantly taller than I am. That tells you how strong those winds were yesterday to be able to force a tree like this down into these yards and this is just one example of what we're seeing we'll go ahead and show you some images right now of uh, the boulder court area which is just a couple of blocks away from where i'm standing right now that area lots of damage associated there we've seen roofs flying off we saw uh, siding ripped off of houses we saw plenty of trees down as well first responders and neighbors were out there yesterday throughout the evening just trying to remove some of the debris from these homes and help out the neighbors that they have in their community something that many people stressed to us was just how fast all of this seemed to happen looked out everybody's sidings roofs are gone there's insulation all over the floor and it's kind of sad seeing my son's friend's house gone and tornado basically went through his roof, uh, went from one side to the other, took everything out. Now, in the meantime, if you have been uh, affected by these storms, as we wait for more information and for daylight 
uh, as well. Uh, there are some resources out there for you. You can call the Red Cross at the number that you see on your screen, 1-800-733-2767. Now, according to the mayor's Facebook post, there is a Family Displacement Resource Center uh, at Fire Station number four. That's out on East 10th Street here in town. And you can also call the city street department to help with clearing some of the debris and some of the limbs uh, that we're seeing out in the area. Now, we do expect to hear a little bit more from the mayor later on today, an update on how the cleanup is going. And we don't know exactly what time that is going to happen, but of course, we will keep you updated. And as soon as we learn more information, we'll have it to you. Grace? Jim, great reporting, great information there. We do appreciate you. We're going to bring you back to Kentucky here for another weather story because the National Weather Service has confirmed an EF1 tornado touchdown in Nelson County, northeast of Chaplin. A family of six was in the building on your screen when storms moved through. Cheryl Fahey says her daughter, another adult, and four kids were in the home when the tornado hit. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Half of the building is gone now, but the place where the family took shelter is still standing. They were under that where the white is. There's a closet that's all closet, and that's where they all were. They were all tucked in there safe and sound. Fahey says once the storm passed, neighbors came out to help clear the debris. Crews from Louisville, PRP, and Fern Creek Fire Departments are sending first responders to help in Henry County. These are photos from Kentucky State Police. They show a home near Newcastle with the roof torn off and exterior walls bent in. Near Smithfield, a car flipped upside down in front of the Keeper's Seafood Restaurant. Those are all some of the photos that we have been seeing come in this morning. We do appreciate you sending them to us. A reminder that both Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir and Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg are expected to provide more information after the severe weather. Mayor Greenberg will give his update at 930 this morning. That's at Metro Hall. Governor Bashir's is set for 1230 in Frankfurt. Our team is on your side and will bring you any crucial information that is shared here this morning. To get those updates sent straight to your phone, all you have to do is download the WHAS 11 news app.